your Raspberry Pi needs an active cooler. In this video, I'll show you how to set one up. We'll do some testing of one without a cooler and what with a cooler, and then I'll tell you why it matters. Stick around for more details. All right, so here's the Raspberry Pi Active Cooler. I really like it. It looks super premium and solid and performs really well. You have the spring pins that are used to quickly attach it to your Raspberry Pi using these holes. First, let's remove the tape. So we can use a double-sided tape and then let's use the spring pins quickly to attach it to the holes I just mentioned. One, and then do the other side. After that, let's make sure to connect the fan to the Raspberry Pi. Make sure to secure. And you're good to go and you can have your fan actively cooling your Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it runs really well and it has really good performance. And this active cooler is compatible with the Raspberry Pi camera. It has space. I use mine with this case that you're seeing. I have a video on it. Make sure to click it and check the link in the description if you want to find more about this case. I love it as it has access for GPIO pins and the camera has a place to attach it. So plenty of options for many projects. Now let's go ahead and do a stress test so we can see how this active cooler performs versus no fan. So we're here in the Raspberry Pi. First we'll open the command terminal and type sudo apt-get install hyphen y stress. And we'll need this to run the stress test. Once installed, we'll go ahead and in the command terminal run this command to get temperature measurements once a second. And then we'll open another window to run the stress command so that we can test the system. Now here I have, and I'm showing you two tests that I did at the same time, one without the fan and one with the fan running. As you can see, immediately within the first five minutes, the one without the fan got to the critical temperature that requires throttling of the CPU. The other one has had several speed increases on the fan as he has reached several thresholds. And then it stays pretty stable on the below the 75 Celsius range. Once you reach the 75 Celsius, the fan runs at 100% speed. And then once we get there, I'm kind of not running the, the video as fast so you can see it run at 100%. But then I stop the stress test and you can see the temperature dip pretty quickly. Now, why does any of this matter? If you go to the Raspberry Pi website under the documentation section, there's a section on frequency management and thermal control. If you read it, it says that all Raspberry Pis perform a degree of thermal management to avoid overheating. They define a limit of 85 Celsius on all models. Now, as the device approaches this limit, various frequencies and sometimes voltage are reduced, which allows to reduce the amount of heat that is generated, keeping the temperature under control. When the core temperature is between 80 and 85 Celsius. We will begin with throttle back and then it will go into full throttle of the RM and the GPU after it reaches 85 Celsius. So, so in general, your Raspberry Pi will prevent itself overheating via throttling, but for you to have optimum performance, you want to have an active cooler or so any sort of fan so that you can use the capabilities of your Raspberry Pi as much as you can. So that's the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bye.